Gary Urie partnered with Camp Electric, and it's this really cool rock and worship camp. It's a summer camp, kind of like camp rock for you know kids, but it's all done by Christian musicians. And uh, sadly, this year we couldn't do it because of COVID. But man, imagine my surprise when I saw one of our Camp Electric winners from our contest from five years ago on the big screen on the TV show Songland. And so we uh, put a few calls out because he's pretty big now. Uh, we're able to secure him. <laughs> Keegan, how are you, man? I am great, Wally. Thank you so, so much for having me this morning. It's uh, it's really a pleasure. It was so crazy to see you pop up on Songland. It's an amazing TV show that gives songwriters a chance to have their songs done by big artists, and you get to sit in a room with these uh, amazing uh, writers. But before we get to all of that, because we're going to get to that, you won Camp Electric, and you went at, what, 15 years old? 15, yeah, that's it. It was back in 2015. Um, man, yeah, I won that contest, which was uh like it was crazy i was so excited when i won and um i actually went and i did the songwriting course at camp electric so well paid off Amazing, for you that's pretty yeah. big yeah man <laughs> do you happen to remember the advice i gave you keegan uh when when we were talking when you won let me tell you this i do know that the morning that you called me i had just gotten out of the shower and i was standing in the middle of the room in a towel <laughs> and i was like what no way <laughs> that's awesome here's the advice that i gave you my daughter's gonna be there keegan and since you're a musician Stay away from her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, now, why did you choose to listen to me then? Because now you're a big guy, a big star. You're going to be huge. It would have been fine for you uh, to uh, hang out with my daughter. Uh, you know, we did hang out. We were friends. We made friends very well, and uh, we got to hang out. And she, actually, I guess we have to thank for this uh, for this set up on the interview so yeah she saw you she's like oh i know that kid i'm like well yeah that's keegan oh my gosh and so uh i want to talk about this too uh with you uh, we're gonna talk about what it was like to be on the show songland uh but you had said you know when you become famous one of our questions was what would you demand to have in your dressing room and you said red skittles had did the people from songland abide by that and only give you red skittles you know what they did not i i gotta call some people about that yeah I, there were skittles i will say there were skittles around but there were no red, particularly red Skittles. Okay, so. I'm going to need to be your agent now, Keegan. Uh, okay. Like, I, I, would, I would make sure that you only have red Skittles for the rest of your life. Well, here's what's cool, though, is, like, I was watching the show, and the one thing that, that kept coming up with, they're like, man, you're just joy. Shane, one of the, the coaches guys, even was like, you're just joyful. Like, so you went in there, you didn't seem stressed at all. I would have been a wreck. Yeah, I guess I kind of grew up performing, and so... So going in there, the performance side was like the least of my worries. The biggest thing I was like, are they actually going to like the song? But I mean, at the end of the day, I, all I could do was sing it. So I just uh, did my best and, uh, and it, it panned out. Um, very well. Yeah, it worked out really well. You won the thing, and then like uh, the uh, artist that was on there ended up recording your song, which is pretty amazing. But you had to go through the process first of writing the song and rewriting it with Ryan Tedder from One Republic. What was that like? Because he seems like a super cool guy and amazingly talented. Absolutely. that You hit the nail on the head, man. Uh, he's super cool. It was so fun being able to go into the studio with him. Uh, it was also really cool for me. I've never really done co-writing before. Everything that I've done has been just me and by myself in my bedroom. And so to be able to go in to like, basically my first real co-write with Ryan Tedder, like, I don't think many people get to say that. He gave me a ton of really good advice. He's actually the one who advised that uh, I move out to LA. So oh, really? When Ryan Tedder looks at you. Yeah, <laughs> when Ryan Tedder tells you to, to come to LA, it's hard to ignore that. So, yeah, well, is, is, uh, you also be like, yeah, that's cool. Can I crash on your couch? Like, like yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> LA's expensive, man. I'm gonna need somewhere to stay. I believe Ryan Tedder is a believer as well, because I thought he started his career trying to get like a Christian record deal, and no one would talk to him. And then he goes out and writes all these great, massive hits. Did you guys get to talk at all about kind of, you know, where your joy comes from? Because everyone kept saying you're just yeah, so joyful. Absolutely, we did get to talk about that. Um, so in the studio he was just giving me a lot of advice for like um just a young songwriter like next steps as far as trying to make this into a career and and uh he opened up about like kind of where he came from he started out as a worship pastor and and doing a lot of Christian music stuff. And, and um, so we did get to talk about that, and it was great. It was interesting because some of the other songs were heavier and darker. And what was really interesting, though, is yours was kind of a little boppier and stuff, and you were just mm -hmm. weren't as heavy. But then, like, the song, from where it started to where it went, became something different. Here's a little clip of uh, Keegan's first song before it was rewritten. Just 
And the big part of the show is you sit there with these pros and you rewrite the thing, and then it came out like this. Now, that's a pretty big change. Were there things that you were like, hey, man, I really want to hang on to this, you know, as part of co-writing this? Or were you like, just take it all, change it all, I don't care, I want to move to L.A.? Yeah, you know, it was just a really collaborative process. And so going into it, you know, anybody who watched the show, Julia made the comment, like, lyrically, she couldn't see herself singing that song, which I knew going in. The way it worked out for me is I just sent in a bunch of my songs. And then they emailed me back and they were like, hey, we like this song, glad you came. And we want you to pitch it to Julia Michaels. And I was kind of like, those don't really fit right. me. You know, glad you came didn't seem like a Julia Michaels song. So I performed it and then she made the comment like, I really like the melodies and cadence, but lyrically, I think we'd have to change a lot. So going into the studio, I knew that. And so it was for me, it was really easy. Um, for that song, especially in particular, I didn't necessarily have like a huge emotional attachment to it or anything like that. It was just kind of a song that I had written in my bedroom um, just as a writing exercise. And so, uh, yeah, for me, it was pretty easy to just be able to be like, let's change it. Let's let's flip it over and uh, make it a Julia Michaels song. So, And it's amazing to watch these guys and these women riff on something and like, hey, what if we move this here and we try this here? Is it really as fluid as that as it seems in, in the edit of the show? Yes, dude. It's insane how fast they work. Like I did the song and then as soon as it was done, they were just instantly bouncing ideas out. And, and it was a cool lesson in co-writing for me to just be like, you know what? Not every suggestion is going to make it to the final thing, but it's about making suggestions. So like, even if something doesn't make it, you don't have to be like embarrassed by that suggestion or whatever. Like just say what you think. We're all here for a reason to write a song. So outside of moving to LA and to possibly squat on Ryan Tedder's uh, couch, uh, like how do you <laughs> think that this is going to help you, uh, you know, in your career? Cause that's a pretty big thing going from like Gadsden, Alabama to LA, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So I've got big hopes um, for the future. I think Songland, more than anything, was just kind of like the open door into the industry and everything like that. So I'm, I'm really excited to see some of the opportunities that come from this. My end game is probably like a production deal, something like that, so I could be writing full time. Yeah. So um, I'm going to keep working towards that. And in the meantime, just writing as much music as I can. I think, dude, because there is, there's always been something about you that we saw years ago when you won our Camp Electric contest. And and I think that that's, you know, your faith defines who you are. And so don't ever lose that in the midst of the craziness. Because I've gone out and I've been successful and I had compromises in my life, you know, to become successful. And I made mistakes and things mm-hmm. that I would change. But I, the thing that, keeps you you and that and one of the reasons i think you probably won this is because there's an intangible and i think that that's god in you and so don't ever lose sight of that and and you're going to be successful you know regardless well thank you so much man i 100 percent agree i i can't claim any of the uh the credit or the glory for this man it's all all the glory to God. You're the third Christian artist to be on that show and win something. Did you realize that? You, uh, Steve Fee, and also uh, the guy from um, We Are Messengers. They both won in the uh, Hobbs and Shaw episode, and they both got their songs uh, made uh, for that movie. So that's three uh, believers that uh, have t- tearing up Songland, man. So good job. You're in a great club, man. Nicely done, buddy. 